in the last video, we generalized our idea of an impulse response to the response to n consecutive blows, which resulted in the following velocity uh, for these given time intervals. Using this idea, we're going to generalize it to model a continuous force, f of t, as a series of consecutive blows give at some time, each acting over an infinitesimally small interval, delta t, uh, which as it tends to zero will turn into dt, so in such a way that the impulse resulting from this force over a given interval is equal to this. So this is an infinitesimally small contribution to the impulse due to this force over this time interval. And the result of all of these blows will result will be uh, this will give the particle the following velocity. So now we only consider a small uh, contribution to the impulse at a time. And because di is equal to f of t dt, Uh, and to differentiate it from this time, it's di is for the force being applied at time t prime. You have the same exponential decay once all the forces go away. So this will be our velocity due to a continuous force that is being modeled as a series of consecutive short-lived short-lived uh, blows to our particle. And as we uh, take the limit to infinite to an infinite amount of, of blows, of consecutive blows, our sum will turn into an integral or will converge to an integral. in such a way that we can rewrite this. DT prime. Okay, so our sum rewritten slightly different, so the dt prime is over here, now converges to an integral as the number of blows tends to infinity. And this is for times greater than t naught prime, so when the first blow was applied. And we can also specify that the velocity is equal to zero and the force is equal to zero four times before t naught prime. This now serves as a solution to our original differential equation. Which I will rewrite a little bit by moving the mass around. So this was our original differential equation, and this is our solution to that differential equation. So more generally, or more compactly, OK. 
can rewrite this in piecewise form. And this we say is some function g of t and t prime. times our force. So we rewrote this in this way. And this, so at the moment it's just notation, but uh, enclosing this part into a single function would allow us to give a physical interpretation of it. So this g of t, t prime is what we call the Green's function. And it is, sometimes also known, especially in engineering, as an impulse response function. So you'll notice this first term was the response in the velocity of our particle due to a single blow. So a single impulse. And this, the general solution then is adding up a bunch of these impulses uh, over some time which will give us our final velocity. Okay, in other words, since the Green's function is the solution to uh, our system when we apply a short, a short sudden blow, this means that we can also write down our differential equation in terms of G. So that in general, if we have a differential equation of this form, then our external force is a delta function. So delta function is what we're using to model a quick sudden blow. So you initially don't have anything and then you apply a quick sudden blow and then it goes back down to zero. Uh, let's see t is equal to t prime. Plus over here. In this way, the solution that we had written before, which I'll just write in general as y of t is equal to an integral over the screen's function. is saying that y, our final solution, is the sum of a system's response to a sequence of impulses. So remember an integral is essentially just a sum. And this turns out to be a very powerful method for sol solving differential equations, both ordinary and partial. So the Green's function method uh, doesn't yield anything particularly useful or any more useful for linear first order differential equations. The solution will be the same as that found by the integrating factor, but it allows us to solve second order differential equations with non-constant coefficients and we'll see how to do that in the next video.